Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of The Split, the young adult book review podcast for readers and writers. I'm Brian Cohen, the author of the Ted Saves the World series, dancing over in Australia, no, flying in Australia, is Robert Scanlon, the author of the Dreamer Chronicles. Very super heroic over there, Robert. Yeah, it's great. It's great for a podcast, isn't it? I'm sure people really could see that on the podcast. Yeah, for the audio. <laughs> people are going to love it on the audio. They'll be able to hear you flying. Yeah, it's like it's um, <laughs> Oh, see, that's, yeah. <laughs> see, we got to think of it like an audio drama here. Uh, how's how's everything going today? Yeah, everything's going really well today. Thank you, Brian. Yep. Been, uh, it's been raining a lot, actually, this week. So yeah. Yeah, we need that in Australia. We get far too much sun, so we need a bit of rain to water us, make us grow. Uh, how's, yeah. your, how's your February? Is it still just as cold? Still cold, yeah. still not, snowy. Not that I'm rubbing it in or anything. but you know. uh, Yeah. <laughs> it's it's the the great thing is though that people in Chicago they they continue to live no matter what the conditions they continue to go out to eat they continue to do all sorts of stuff regardless of the weather and it's just so great it, it's a lot of tough people in Chicago determined tough stubborn mm-hmm. even so definitely <laughs> stubborn so, nature definitely you're not going to mess with us. We're going to make yeah. it. That must be, uh, oh. must be the home of superheroes then. It could be the home of superheroes. Uh, and, and one superhero it could be the home of, well, in the book is not <laughs> Chicago, but uh, is today's book uh, protagonist. Uh, Meta is the name of the book by Tom Reynolds. And this was a book suggested to us by Kevin Chapman, our first person who suggested a book that we approved there were there have been a few but this one was available in audio so it was easier for me to listen to and and i'm really excited to talk about this one because meta is in my genre it's a superhero book ted saves the world is a superhero book and there's a lot of similarities between between our books so it's really cool to be able to talk about it um as usual we'll summarize we will talk about it, reader, writer perspective, takeaways, and the prompt of the week. Sound good to you, Robert? Yeah, it sounds fantastic, Brian. Hit me up with it. All right. Connor Connolly is a loser, an orphan, and literal dead meat until a mysterious pair of wristbands gives him magical abilities. He goes from nothing to meta overnight, a superpowered being that many thought were extinct. With the help of a masked vigilante named Midnight, Connor must keep his identity secret and his city safe from a new wave of villainy. So, uh, Meta, like I said, first book in my genre that, that we're reading, superheroes and whatnot. I think there's things to enjoy here and there are things to critique uh, why don't you have the first crack at it, Robert? Yeah, I have the first crack at it. And again, thanks to Kevin for, for recommending it. I, look, one of the things that I love about this book, it's, it's a quick read, by the way. It's only a, bit, a little bit over 60,000 words. Um, but it doesn't spare you any time. This, it doesn't take any time to get going. You know, you're writing the action from the first paragraph. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I like the character Connor, um, despite the things that we might criticize about the way some of the plotting happens. Um, I liked him as a character. He wasn't too too weaselly and nerdy. It was just, you know, someone who's definitely the, the, the classic social misfit. So there's a lot of superhero tropes in this book. Um, but I don't think it takes away from it. I think it actually sets it firmly where it should be, which is in that genre where, you know, the kind of the outcast kid who really only has one friend somehow manages to acquire these, you know, awesome superpowers and then doesn't really know what to do with them and, and finds himself very challenged. Um, and, and it just doesn't let up. There's good action all the way through. There are some surprises in there. There's some kind of mm-hmm. odd, odd things, but... You know they're okay. Uh, it didn't bother me. I I enjoyed the book. I, I raced through it, and it was a great read. So yeah, thanks for the suggestion. What about you? What did you think? Yeah, definitely fun. Definitely in the middle of the action. One thing I have to point out right away: it's in the first person present, <laughs> and we've talked about first person present a few times. Uh, it's in a lot of books. It's in Divergent. It's in it's in several of Hunger the books games, we've read. Yeah. Hunger Games. Uh, I'm not sure if it worked for this book. I I think it was good to be 
first person I like. I don't like present tense, tense. books. Yeah. It, 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 it rubs me the wrong way. Mm. And since it's not what I prefer as a reader, sometimes I have trouble with it. Obviously, when you're reading it or listening to it for 20 minutes, you get used to it pretty quickly. Yeah. But uh, if you're going to do first person present, you use contractions. I just can't yeah. deal with I, I am... Yeah. He, you know, he did. I can't. I, I have trouble dealing with no contractions because it sounds stilted, and I don't know why people do it that way. I think this book would have been would have been a little better for me in in present te- in pa- past tense and with the use of contractions. Just my personal preference. Like I think the book was good and was fun, but. There, there's room room for improvement in just the basic fundamentals of the book being the uh, POV and the and the tense. I wonder. So, it just occurs to me. It's my beef. Yeah, it's a it's a valid point though because you know you're expressing from a reader's point of view or a listener's point of view, and I wonder mm-hmm. if this is more uh, more um, jarring perhaps if it's not done well in a, in a audiobook version to hear the well it's interesting he he read he read his own book ah, in the okay. audience because okay. he's he's a popular podcaster yeah so he he knew that readers would want to hear his voice as popular so that that's that? smart <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a great that's a great question robert uh, <laughs> one that we should great, not answer right now <laughs> one that we should not answer if we if we want to get out of our depression but, but, uh, what, but what did you think about well we need meta bands you know that was going to be my question you know what do you think about the meta bands i think they were i thought they were awesome what do you think they're super cool as a device they're yeah. super cool and they 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 lead to so much we, we talked about vampire academy last week they they leave such a, a wide canvas to play with. Yep. There's so many cool ways you can go, and different meta bands have different powers. And oh, it's it's a comic book lover's dream it for is. sure. It's a, it's a great device, yeah. and I think that um, when you have an imaginary uh, imaginative story like this, it, it leaves a lot of room to play. And I know there's already a second book out, and I'm sure he's going to work on multiple ones. So so. Definitely, like I think there were opportunities to maybe play with it even more in this book, but he, I'm glad he did play and that he had a lot of fun with it. You could tell from reading it that he had so much fun doing this. Yes, and I must apologize as well to listeners and, and watchers. That I should probably explain a little bit more about the meta bands. The, they kind of appeared out of nowhere. They you can put them on your wrists. They to activate, they have to be touched together, crossed together. But somehow mm-hmm. you can think them into being on standby or sleep mode, which means that they yeah. kind of vanish into your wrist, but they're still on but not really working. Um, and once they're paired with a human, they can't be used by anybody else. So there's yeah. no going and hacking someone's wrist off just to steal their meta bands. There's, there's no point. Um, and, and it went bad when the first round of meta bands arrived on Earth. You know, some of these superheroes just decided they were going to turn into super villains, which I thought was a cool twist. You know, that mm-hmm. the superheroes could be well, people can use powers for bad. You know, you know, and we tend, mm-hmm. to, think, tend to think of the the sort of whole Lex Luthor thing as a as a given that someone was born a villain and you know that's just how they are but no actually these yeah. bands came and gave, gave people power so in, far encompassing that they actually decided they would use them for their own personal gain yeah yeah for sure for sure and i mean that's something i played with in one of my ted books and and it's it's so fun to make heroes or people you want to be heroes go bad because it just it there's a lot of fun in there, and it happens in the comics all the time. So. It's true, true. So, well, there you go. So there's another use of a trope that's, you know, I wasn't really probably as aware of um, mm-hmm. as, uh, as you being the master of the genre. Uh, but, <laughs> well, uh, it's, uh, I wouldn't go and say that. <laughs> it's, uh, but there's a lot of action in the book. It's, it, you know, it certainly keeps moving. Um, and, and yes. You, and it's not always the same action as well, which I think is tricky with superhero stuff because if you've got someone with a set of powers and they're equipped to do a certain thing, then all, all you ever read about is them 
then using these powers to do such things. Mm-hmm. Um, there, there are kind of, kind of some weird things, though, from a reader's perspective. I never really understood why it was that his mentor actually isn't a superhero. Um, well, there is this whole thing about there's a collection of vigilantes yeah. who are kind of, um, I guess they're almost like those guys in a, what's the, the video game book? Uh, Ready Player One. It's those those people who just know so much about the superheroes yeah, that they yeah, come yeah. and yeah. help uh, the the cause. It, it's almost like those guys. They know so much that they uh, they join in the fight and try to help people. Um, it's mentioned a little bit, but it, it's easy to gloss over. Like so, like when when he was introduced, I was like, oh yeah, they talked about those guys earlier. Yeah. Um, oh, yes. So. I, yeah. I did, wasn't surprised that they existed. I, it was the fact that somehow, even though he wasn't a superhero, he just seemed to be more super <laughs> than even the superheroes. It was kind of weird. Uh, yeah. You know, I expected yeah. him to have more human fallibility, and uh, and he didn't. And yeah, whatever. Yeah. 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 Personal Understood. Thing. <laughs> Personal thing. Well, let's talk about the writer's perspective. Yeah. Uh, This book, I think, suffers from the same thing my first book suffered from, and and, and that's that we don't get inside the characters' heads enough to see how they're feeling. Mm. It's a lot of action, dialogue, action, dialogue, action, dialogue. Mm. And my first book is the exact same, and and I had comments on that for sure of of just why that's a problem. And, And... when everything is conveyed from dialogue and our imagination, it, it's tough to know, like, well, how is this affecting Connor? How is this mm. impacting him? How does he feel normally? And how does he feel differently right now? How does he feel after he gets punched? How does he feel like mm. there's a lot of things that um, don't get conveyed? And it was the same thing with Ted Saves the World. And I think that's just a first novel blues sort of thing that. Uh, you're like, oh yeah, you need to, like people, re- readers really want those emotions. And, and, and I didn't realize at the time to convey them. And maybe in the second wave, the, the sequel to this book, maybe Reynolds plays with that a little bit more. I know that was something I really needed to learn deeply. Yeah. And it's, um, there are some really good resources for that too. I don't know if you've, I'm sure you have come across them. Um, I I can't remember his name now, but uh, Techniques of the Selling Writer. It's a very dense book, but he drills down the specific nature of the structure of a scene. And, you know, if you think of the scene as your, your ba- most basic building block, I suppose, of a, of a story. Mm-hmm. You know, if you, I was reading um, yesterday uh, the story grid guy, uh, Sean Coyne, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. talking about, you know, if you can make every scene work, and go from you know goal through conflict, then disaster, and and then the decision at the end. Then there's your story, assuming you have an, an overarching plot line. Uh, yeah. And I know a lot of people, you know, good pantsers will do this intuitively anyway. But the whole idea is that scenes are supposed to rise and fall. You know, the idea of there's this idea that within a scene there's scene and sequel, and the scene is where the action happens, and then the sequel is where the reaction happens. And mm-hmm. I, I specifically worked hard on that for my last two books where I probably suffered the same as you, writing for action and pace in the first yeah. book. And then you re- when you read it, you realize that, you know, how come... In fact, one of my beta readers said about the first book, said, but Nathan, you know, he's really... He's like a science nerd, you know, and he just they discover they've got this cool magic and he, in this other parallel world and he doesn't even ask how it works. He doesn't even, he's not even curious. Okay, that's a big flaw, isn't it? All right. Uh, yeah, and it led me to a, a giant rewrite and majorly improved, improved the story. Then, yeah. following on from that, I, di- I discovered this whole sort of scene sequel thing where, as you say, you know, the reaction of the character. So take it right back away from me and you, but back to, to Connor and, and Meta. You know, there are times where he just kind of suddenly decides that he's got to get a job. I don't even know yeah. why. It's, oh, yeah, I need a job. And then he's at the electronic store. And it, it sets up a nice action scene. But there was, I mean, you know, what's his motivation, man? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so, yeah, I think you're right there. It's uh, some depth maybe would have really helped. Yeah. But, yeah, it's, 
debut novel so yeah oh for sure for sure um you know to, to follow up on your point of, of you know, some things seem like they just kind of happen like um like the crush on the girl sarah yeah that's just kind of thrown in i hope it's developed more in future books because really it just seems like oh we got a main character he needs to have a crush on a girl and <laughs> i mean i'm pretty convinced at this point that i know sarah's identity is probably as a meta or something uh i won't go deeply into that but that's just my my thought uh is is how they'll pull that out in 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 book two but yeah i mean they're they're the reasoning the justification behind things were a little light and and so as a result you feel like the story is happening to you versus you living the story and yeah, and so i think yes. you you want yes. you want it to feel natural because when when i was in theater and 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 i did directing one of the points that i got that really hit home from from my instructors was i mean you don't want to tell an actor how to act a scene you want them to you want to lead them until they make the discovery that you wanted to tell them yes. like if they find it themselves they're much more willing yes. to go with it yes. and that's kind of the same thing from a writer reader perspective you want you don't want to tell them that a thing is happening you want them to understand why it's happening you want them to feel it you want them to under uh, to just be a part of it so yeah we have this saying in um, completely different world of mine in another business we have this saying that nobody argues with their own brilliant ideas and, mm. and i think you know an author would do well to write so that the reader feels like they're the one coming up with the the ideas and experience you know and and, and even to a degree like you're saying yeah i think i kind of get what sarah's going to be we'll see you know and that's <laughs> he, he's kind of just been able to sneak that in but he's also made you aware of the fact that I don't really know why Sarah's come on the scene and why she's got this sort of apparent attraction for, for Connor. So a little bit extra in there w would have been great. I, I would like to, though, contrast the way I feel, and Tom Reynolds, I know you're listening to this podcast like you do every week. Um, you know, I'd like to make this quite clear. This book is way superior from my point of view than Divergent, for example. Um, for sure. And Divergent is a mega selling book and movie series. So, you know, whilst we critique things, we do it out of a, a love for the listener and a love for fiction. And that's mm. not to say that there are, although there are flaws in the book, to me, it's still wildly better than some of our major YA sellers out there. So it's kind of bizarre what takes people's fancy. Yeah, that is for sure. I've got one more um, thing I want to, to finish off with from yeah. the writer's perspective. Um, I did think I really loved the meta bands. I thought they were a very, very clever plot device. And uh, you know, yeah. being a, a sci-fi nerd, they really appealed to me. I felt quite let down when at some point it was revealed that they were battery powered. I just thought that was stupid. Ah, <laughs> uh, you thought they on. should be unlimited. Oh, or, or, well, they're, they're, oh, no, they're self-recharging. The they're self-recharging yeah, so they're power, but you could just think them back to power again oh, you know i just didn't get it uh <laughs> they should have been it should have been fueled up on emotion or something like that if they were going to leak power out or something i don't know just see like that reminds me of another indie book we should read because uh be, being jamie baker uh she she has superpowers that are powered by emotion oh nice uh, so you you might like it Yes, but, in fact, we're going to read um, at some point. I am number four, which is the most. It, it has some of that. Yeah, it's a diabolically bad movie, um, a bit like as we were talking about last week, Vampire Academy. The Vampire um, Academy. But the yeah. book, I I, I loved it. I read the book way before I saw the movie, and uh, I really loved it. I read the whole series. So. Anyway, yeah, so we digress completely. Thanks to digress. Kevin for um, for recommending Meta. I know you'd heard of it and wanted to read it because of the superhero mm -hmm. thing. But I imagine this probably leads us to some takeaways. It does. Uh, so I think that if you are trying to create this imagine, imagination filled world, I mean, give yourself a big playground to play with lots of cool things that you can do, 
have some fun with it. Because if you have fun creating the world, people are, are going to, your readers are going to have fun uh, getting immersed in it. Yes. Yes, indeed. And the superhero genre is a, is a great fun genre as well. I mean, there really is a lot, as you would know, uh, writing in the genre mm-hmm. is a great deal of fun you can have with it uh, and still be deep and meaningful. I mean, let's face it. So, uh, yeah. And it leads me to my takeaway, which is that superhero, the Hooper superhero genre is a cliched genre, but it doesn't mean that you can't use its tropes and you can't write in its genre with some different spin on it. And I think actually Meta succeeds in that for me. It's got a nice spin. I enjoyed it. I would read more of the author's work. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, my third takeaway, I think, write short, quick books if you if you want a lot of readers to get excited about it. Because I mean, his book is very popular. I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that he has a huge audience um, from his podcast, and he has over three hundred reviews on on his first book, which is yeah. pretty impressive for a book that I don't even know if he's done a a free run. I think he's on KDP Select, but I don't think he's done a free run. Uh, So he's just getting these books from his massive fan base. And that's something. I mean, that is really, really incredible. So um, part of that definitely has to do with it being a short, quick read that people can get in, get out, and say that they enjoyed it. Do you think he's offering swag? Because I'd really love to win a pair of Meta Bands. Ooh, that is a great question. <laughs> uh, that's a great question. It kind of segues into my prompt. Go for it. All right. What would be your three superpowers of choice and why? What would you use those powers for first and how would they change your life? <laughs> would mm. be, and would they be evil superpowers? Yeah, I think I'd have to go with, at this point, time uh, manipulation because I just need a few days to even <laughs> catch up on everything I got going on. Um, well, here's something to give you a bit of a boost. I'm probably 20% of the way through Portal Combat and I'm loving it. I, it's so, ah, it's so thank good. you. It's just, it's, it's, it's just when I finish a chapter and I think, and, oh, there's a cliffhanger at the end of every chapter and then you get into the next. Yep. Oh, I love it. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> really, really looking forward to finishing that and seeing seeing where that goes. Actually, I meant to mention that too. At the end of Meta, there is a, a pretty giant cliffhanger. And you know me, I don't like cliffhangers at the end of books, but I thought mm-hmm. it was really well done. And you know, the story itself resolves, but it leaves it wide open for where it's heading in the next one. Yeah, it was it was very much the sequel cliffhanger. It wasn't like a cliffhanger on that plot. You. Um, mm-hmm. like you said, it, it resolved the, the stuff and then it said, Oh, here's the setup for season two. Yes. Um, so yeah, that I agree. That was, that was a great way of doing it for sure. Uh, so, you know, we do this show every week. Did you know that Robert? I've come we, to that conclusion actually, cause I keep turning up here every week and it seems to happen. So I think you're probably, yeah. right. You're probably right. Well, you know, we're doing another book next week what? and that book, I know. I know that book is The Selection by Kira Cass. I've seen this book around so much. I always see it pop up in, in not my also bots, uh, but, but I see it in the genre so much. Very excited to read it, and I know nothing about it. So I'm really going flying blind, and so that is going to be our book next week. But, you know, if people email us, like Kevin Chapman did, and tell us uh, books they'd like us to check out, we will check them out, and uh, especially if they're in audio, so that I can listen to them while I'm running around Chicago and shoveling uh, my wife's car out. Um, so please email us. Uh, check us out on the splitbookreviews.com. Give us a review on iTunes and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Do all those things. Write your book, put it in the comments, and thank you again mm-hmm. to, to Haley for your continued follow-up on Maze Runner series and prompting us to mention what book we're reviewing next week. So maybe you'd like to read along with us, you know. Read along with Brian and Robert. Yeah, that's a good idea. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <You might laughs> I don't just, know what that voice. No. <laughs> it was just a you great might voice. Understand, you might understand what the hell we're talking about when it comes to the book review. 
you might, but there's no, no there's guarantee. no guarantee oh, of no, that. No, no. Yeah, okay, we guarantee yeah. nothing on this show. We should really tweet that. We should tweet out what the the book the following week is going to be. Yeah, yeah, so but I, we just need more idea. Twitter followers. Yeah, what's, what's Twitter? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Uh, but this was great, awesome. Uh, getting, these episodes are getting longer and longer. <laughs> Hopefully, we're providing more and more value, but. Uh, thank you guys for listening. Check us out uh, everywhere, the splitbookreviews.com especially. For Robert Scanlon, I'm Brian Cohen, and we'll see you next week uh, for uh, a review of The Selection by Kira Cass. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you guys for watching. Somewhere on this page is a subscribe button to the Split channel. We do reviews every week. We would love it if you followed us every single week. Is, isn't that right, Robert? That's exactly right. Follow us now. Hit the subscribe button. Do it. <laughs> <laughs>